Thank you, Mr. Kent. Uh, next up for seven minutes, Mr. Angus. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming uh, and participating in our study here. Um, Mr. Broadhead, you were with Infrastructure Canada before you went to Sidewalk Labs. So what was the nature of your communications with Sidewalk Labs Alphabet while you were working for the federal government? Yeah, no, it's a, thank you for the question. Um, so I worked at Infrastructure uh, and then left and, and went to be Chief of Staff at Indigenous Services. Mm -hmm. I had absolutely no contact with Sidewalk Labs while I was at Chief of Staff to the Minister of Infrastructure. Uh, my first contact with them was after the RFP was completed when I was at Indigenous Services. So you you contacted? Did they contact you when you were at Indigenous Services? They had uh, one of the one of their newly hired staff reached out to me to talk about Toronto issues. She had recently taken on the role, okay. and wanted to learn more about Toronto politics. And so um, was that the the bridge then for you to go work for them? So then uh, following that, then uh, multiple conversations. Uh, uh, took place over uh, until kind of late January uh, 2018, at which point um, I, uh, expecting an offer from, from Sidewalk Labs, I got in touch with the Office of the Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commissioner and uh, had that conversation. And then once the offer was received, I submitted that and all the other information that was required by the Commissioner. Uh, and she and or the office uh, greenlit my ability to accept that offer in, in early February 2018. Thank you. I think one of the concerns we have is certainly the Prime Minister has been very close on this project and when I read the Auditor General's report I might be reading a different Auditor General's report than my colleagues that were asking but the Auditor General noted one of the problems with this process was that the communications that should have been and consultations that should have been done at other levels are being done at a very high political level. Uh, so who was doing that behind the scenes consultation at a high political level? No one that I'm aware of. Mr. Doctorov? No one that I'm aware of. And I, I so would just somebody mysterious was, I mean, this is the Auditor General. This isn't me. You're well, telling me you don't know who was handling Mr. this? Mr. Angus, I, I can only speak to our, our communications, and I can tell you that we scrupulously adhere to the prohibition on contact with government officials in the Waterfront Toronto RFP. That okay. applied to Mr. Broadhead, that applied to any okay. government official, and I would just emphasize that that very first conversation Mr. Broad had spoke about with a Sidewalk Labs employee occurred one month after the public announcement of our selection. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe I don't know where the Auditor General got her facts from. That's, that's strange. We'll have to f wonder about that. But the Auditor General found Waterfront Toronto emails that said the board was being urged strongly by the federal government to authorize that framework agreement to put, and putting pressure on. So who from the federal government was doing that pressure? Mr. Broadhead? I, I have no idea who no idea. Uh, who they were referring to. Okay. Um, so when we got a letter recently from Julie DiLorenzo, uh, who was on the uh, real estate board, and she was contradicting Waterfront Toronto, and she was saying that Contrary to the claims that there were many IREC meetings prior to the vote on the framework agreement, she said that was false. She said this was a complex, lengthy document, and she was only given four business days to review and assess and seek out counsel, and three days after receiving the framework agreement at the IREC, uh, there was a, the meeting um, of which she would not move this agreement forward to the board with approval. Um, so... Who was putting the pressure on to get this thing through? I mean, you must have, I mean, come on. You know people. They're, we, making, we, they're working for your project. We, we respected the rules of the procurement. Um, I do know uh, that when Meg Davis and Christina Werner from Waterfront Toronto testified here, um, you know, last month or a couple months ago, they did indicate that that committee, the IREC committee, on which I believe Ms. DiLorenzo sat, met six times. Okay. Well, she said that was, she said they made a false statement to our committee. And that, that to me is serious because committee is actually like being in court. You have to tell the truth. So um, if she said that there were no meetings, and that's why she would not bring it forward. But I'm running out of time here. So uh, the Auditor General found that Waterfront Toronto gave information prior to the RFP they gave more information to your bid than to the other competing bids. 
So who uh, was giving it from Waterfront Toronto to you prior to that bid? Let me, let me speak to that, if I may. Um, Waterfront Toronto, in its market sounding process, uh, invited a, an exchange with us and, as Dan said, 51 other companies. Um, the uh, information specifically referred to in the Auditor General's report were uh, three one-page topographical maps and a five-page extract uh, on a report on uh, uh, goods transportation. And the law firm of Denton's did a study of those documents and concluded, number one, uh, that the maps uh, were also requested and received uh, by Ellis Don. Okay. Two, that all of the information was equivalent to information that was publicly available at the time of the RFP. And three, that it was incidental, if not irrelevant, to the RFP response. And I think that is why Justice Osborne said well, I, that he was great. satisfied. Justice Osborne said that great, he was satisfied that there was no advantage conferred on Sidewalk Labs so after a the detailed order, review of that information. Say that? I mean, I guess my, my thing that I find hard to believe, like in Canada, our Auditor Generals, we try to treat them like Supreme Court's justice. Well, you, not the way you guys treat Supreme Court justice. Sorry, I may I re retract that. Like when an Auditor General comes out with a report, it's damn serious. Uh, and when the Auditor General says that you've got more information than others and you tell me, oh, we got a one-page map, uh, I, I find it hard to believe the Auditor General would make note of that and think that that was unfair. So, Mr. Angus, the facts, the facts are the, the facts. That's it was the three, facts it was three one page in the maps. Auditor General's report. It was, it was three one-page maps and a okay. five-page extract on goods transportation. Okay. And Mr. Os Justice Osborne, I should say, says, I am satisfied, quote, that no organization, including the eventual shortlisted proponents, yeah. was provided with any information or documentation that was not publicly or readily accessible. The evidence okay, pertaining so just, sorry, to this, to me, so, seems clear. You. So just the last question, because, Mr. Dr. Rob, you said second largest RFP in Waterfront Toronto history. Waterfront Toronto said the same thing. We were all scratching our heads because the Auditor General said the opposite. So again, we have the Auditor General that you guys keep saying is just making stuff up out of thin air. But in the RFP, it was from March 17th to April 27th. Now, I'm not a big developer, but that seems like a really short timeline. So how do you say that's the second largest, longest thing that you've ever seen when it was like from March 17th to April 27th? That was the RFP. Because that was only the first stage of the RFP. The RFP then continued over and another five and that. a half months. And the Auditor General said that it was an extremely short, she said like, uh, public art projects have to go through about five times as long as what you went through. So I just wonder how did all this happen and you don't know who was talking behind the scenes to help you. I, I'm just, I'm confused. I don't think it's fair to draw the conclusion that people were talking behind the scenes from a disagreement about the stages of an RFP. Those two things don't seem to me to be connected at all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Angus. Uh, next